Hello and welcome to Kino Good Vibes Only. Today we are going to explore Museum Island's Bode Museum. That's only if I can manage to get out of my bed. This is going to be a super chill vlog. Let's go. This is going to be day five of my Berlin trip a few months ago. I'm pretty sure it's not just me, but it's really hard to wake up when you're on vacation, right? tell you guys they have two USB ports on each side of the bed there's one here and there's one in that corner and then right there we have more USB ports over there it's awesome you wouldn't even need to bring a travel charger, but I always do that, so. Here. They have a couple of USB ports, a couple of Ethernet ports. This one's a dimmer for this lamp. for recycling. I'm gonna show you the tourist trap. There is the tourist trap. Unless you're a millionaire or super rich. This too, I got this from their grocery store. <laughs> this, this one is Coffee and tea if you want. These are free. We have an espresso. Estretto. I don't know what that is. Voluto. They have their tea. So the only thing that is planned for today is our visit in the Bode Museum. 
but the rest of the day is we are just gonna be winging it because I don't really like traveling with a lot of bullet points of plans but if we're talking about flights we are gonna have to like plan every single thing because we don't really want to miss flights but once we're in our destination it's gonna be Kesara Sara what will be will be which is not really a good idea because we are traveling in a pandemic and a lot of stuff a lot of the schedules have to be scheduled like entrances to the museums are timed right now they are controlling the amount of people entering every single venue so because of that we have to sign up for every single time slot and sometimes one museum is more popular than the other and sometimes you end up with no time slots so this museum boat museum i scheduled this a couple of days before i went there and one of the museums is very popular the pergamon museum is booked a few days in advance so the pergamon museum i booked it maybe three days before and it's hard to pick your preferred time slot because you're gonna end up with the schedules that are not very popular like usually late in the day today we are going to take the train to the museum island you can walk there but it's gonna take an hour and I kind of want to conserve my energy you can buy your tickets here or you can buy it in the airport if you watched my previous vlogs I got my ticket from the baggage claim area of the airport and this is the machine that you can get your tickets from right beside it a small red tower is the validating machine you have to validate your tickets before you use the public transportation because I've said before in my previous vlogs the public transportation in Germany runs on um, honor system so they don't have uh, uh, scanners in front of the trains or buses but they have people in civilian clothing or maybe secret police looking out for people who cheat the public transportation system so from the train station we can walk to the museum island and I got here pretty early so I went sightseeing I looked for a cafe and look here they have a cute police boat looking at this you would think that the boat museum looks like a castle surrounded by waters protected by waters but you would also see that it's connected to a bunch of trains and maybe that's why mm, that's why it was easy for thieves to steal stuff from the museum and one of them is a gold coin gifted by Canada to the museum it was I think it was around three and a half million euros and a couple of guys stole it from the museum and the only thing that they found was dusts of the gold which they think they probably melted the gold and stole it and they never found the gold but they found the suspects and I'm not sure what happened to them it's probably a gang 
and uh, probably an inside job too because it shouldn't be that easy to steal a large gold coin in a heavily guarded museum. You can google it yourself. I'm not a good source, I'm not the expert, but I read about it and I'm not sure. Just double check. All over Berlin and Potsdam they have these cool looking trolleys, very shiny trolleys, they look new and they run regularly all over the place and I'm very jealous because we don't have that in Chicago. Museum Island is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and if you are into museums, this island is for you. We are going to be exploring a few of the islands but not, I mean not the islands, a few of the museums but not all of them because there's too many of them and it's hard to schedule for the time slots because of the pandemic and um, yep, you can watch Gamal the Gallery and Alta National Gallery it's already out in my vlog and then this one's gonna be for both museum and a little later towards the day we are going to Panorama Museum of uh, Pergamon and then later we're gonna go to Pergamon Museum too You guys, do you guys think that those are bullet marks? It's probably around 8 o'clock in the morning right now and I'm just walking around the museum island looking for a cafe. And unfortunately we are not in Japan or Korea because if we are in Japan or South Korea, you would find a cafe every 5 meters. Yep, they love their coffee in Japan and South Korea. After walking around the museum island for maybe 20 minutes, I finally found a cafe. It's right after these cool graffiti and it's called Cafe Seri? Cafe Seri? Something like that. I don't know how to say it. And I ordered a hot mocha with chocolate orange tart. They also serve glue wine here, which is mulled wine, mulled red wine. And it's great. It's a good idea, but I usually end up with a migraine because of the tannins or maybe because of the red wine. I'm not sure. That's why I prefer to drink it at night. It would be nice to drink it in the morning. But I kind of want to explore the city without a migraine. So I booked the time slot that is the opening time of the museum, which is probably a great idea because there's not a lot of people in here during that I'm time. They also have a cafe in the second floor of the entrance. The architecture looks amazing, but a couple of things that I'm really excited to see is their collection of Donatello. Donatello is a popular Italian sculptor. I also want to see their Byzantine art collection. Byzantine Empire is basically a Roman Empire, but they just named it Byzantine because they are Romans but they are not inside Rome. I just had coffee but I want to see the cafe. They were in Turkey. It used to be Constantinople but it's it was in Turkey. Right on so pretty right right by Hagia Sophia they also have probably the largest collection of coins and I'm not talking about your typical coins I'm talking about 
coins from Babylon, coins from Macedon, coins from the old Egyptian civilization. You would see coins from the reign of Alexander the Great, from Arsinoa the Second. I'm really surprised to see a lot of the coins where they have female leaders in Egypt. And you're gonna see it later towards the end of the walking tour of Bode Museum. We are currently in the cafe, gift shop of Bode Museum. There's a lot of uh, Greek and Roman sculptures, mostly Roman and Greek gods, a lot of uh, religious artifacts, a few Medici crests sprinkled around the museum, busts and sculptures of cardinals and popes. Comment down below in the comment section with a timestamp of your favorite art piece that you've seen inside the Bode Museum. Watch out for the Donatello sculptures and the Alexander the Great coins, the Arsinoa the Second coin, and Cleopatra Thea coin. Most of them are made in gold. But also Google about that Lupin the Third stuff that happened when they lost almost a three and a half million euro gold coin i think it's like 30 centimeter gold coin that they lost i don't know how they did it it it's around 200 it's more than 200 pounds of gold it's crazy the next haul after this haul is mostly religious artifacts but um, right in the center on the top of the hall you would see a crest with six balls and that is the crest of the Medici the Medici family is like your typical business family but they amassed so much wealth that they practically own Europe. They have people in churches and they have people in installed with other royal families all over Europe. I am not an expert. I am not a history major. But if you are, if you know more about art history and European history, please feel free to write what you think down in the comment section below and teach us. Thank you so much. This is Venus, and the sculpture on the other side of the staircase is Mercury or Hermes.
so much of this. This looks like my grandma, Mang's house. She's very religious and she has a lot of religious figures in her house. She is the nicest person ever and I would always run up to her every time my dad would come after me every time I do something bad. I would just run and cry and the situation would be reversed. She would end up coming after my dad. These chairs look amazing. You would think it's painted, but it's actually a mosaic, a mosaic of wood using their natural color. The, the black part is probably burnt wood, I'm not sure. They have a couple of shield bearers here that decorated a tomb. And for some reason, their genitals are are kind of engorged. It's like too big for the... If you look at the proportion of their body, it's like too big. And the facial expression is a little bit erotic. So it's a little weird that they these sculptures used to be housed in a church. This is by Donatello. And the next few sculptures are by Donatello as well.
Bernardetto de Medici by Vasari. It's the Medici grass. I don't know why I was whispering.
Now here are the coins. They have a big collection. They also have uh, stuff that the Chinese, the, the people in Thailand used as money before they before we ever invented coins. The Babylon hoard of Arabic coins. So these are money before coinage. These are Chinese money, Thai money, Tibet, African money before coins were invented. Ruler portraits in antiquity. So watch out for Alexander the Third. That's Alexander the Great, Arsinoe the Second, and there's also Cleopatra Thea. They're like female rulers, and of course Alexander the Great is Alexander the Great.
é. They also have ivory pieces, but that sucks though because you really want elephants more than the ivory because it's just cruel to, you know, just steal their tusks for a freaking display.
I was really surprised to see this piece of sculpture here because I'm pretty sure I saw this in the Louvre Museum in Paris a few months ago before I I went to Germany and I googled it and this is a Barberini font and it's probably a, co a copy or I think the one that I saw in the Louvre Museum was the copy and this one's probably a copy too and the original is in Munich which is uh, according to Wikipedia the original was used as a weapon to throw at invaders and they said that because the original sculpture has damage all over it. Now we're gonna go to the lower level. They have a new exhibit in the lower level of Bode Museum. Please feel free to pause your screen if you want to read this. Bode's anti-Semitism Max Friedlander, who succeeded Bode as director of the Gemalde Gallery in 1924 and as a Jew, was forced out of office at the beginning of the National Socialist Dictatorship in 1933, wrote that Bode had worked for the advancement of the Berlin Museums for half a century with more success than any other museum director but also that he was completely unprincipled, even innocently unscrupulous as a man of action. Bode's correspondence contains anti-Semitic statements. How should an institution address the fact that its namesake made unforgivably hateful accusations against Jewish citizens? Bode's anti-Semitism is particularly shameful in view of the prominent role Jewish patrons such as James Simon, played for the Berlin Museums, and bowed support for the Jewish painter Max Liberman. In recent years, calls for changing the name of the museums have grown stronger. Since Bode's services for the Berlin Museums are undeniable, we advocate retaining the name Bode Museum. We see it as our duty to be open about Bode's anti-Semitism and to reflect critically and unsparingly on it. That is kind of BS for me because I would not even know that he is anti-Semitic. Like you would look at it from the outside. You look, you, you, you look at this piece of architecture with the big, with, with Bode's name in bold letters outside and you would not know that he is a POS, a piece of shit. If you are really reflecting critically on it, you would probably remove his name already. I'm so sorry, but my vlog is all about good vibes only, but the truth is good vibes too. So if it's true that he is a piece of shit, then... Maybe it will be a good idea for them to remove his name from the museum. Now we are entering the Byzantine collection.
All right, everyone. Thank you so much for walking around with me all over the museum and also for taking the subway with me. It has been fun and I hope you had fun too. See you in my next vlog. Thank you so much.